at. Okay. Rachel, it's our second check-in. It flew by. I feel like, how is this already here? I know. Really? Okay. So what we did is we did that initial consultation and that was our first time meeting. You set some big goals. You told me your vision. We got real real with each other. And so this is kind of the same thing, but now you've just been in it for a few weeks. Yeah. I'm excited for it today too, because um, we do talk every day and um, like being able to voice note is nice because like it can still fit into my schedule where it's not like, okay, let me type everything out. Yes. Sometimes it's a lot, um, but it's really caused me to like step back and take a moment and really reflect mm. on where am I at in this journey? Where do I still need to go? Um, and you, I applaud you because you do so many check-ins like with me, like how does that make you feel? So it's instead of me, typically I'm just like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it mm -hmm. for me to like sit back and be like, okay, is this going to fit in? How does this yeah. make me feel? You know, that's, it's been helpful because I don't always take the time to stop, sit back and really reflect. Yeah. I'm just like, go, go, go. Let's keep pushing forward. So some of those questions that, you know, those reflective questions you'll ask me, I'll have to really stop and say, well, how do I feel about yeah. this? Like, I know I said, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> like, I, just, I don't always take time to think. Yeah, I was like, okay, well, if Kate's saying it, like, I trust her. <laughs> I'm going to go with it, you know. But sometimes if it does involve, like, more prep or, you know, whatever yeah. it is, it's like, well, how do I feel? So, yeah. So, mm. I really enjoyed moving to the daily check-ins for sure. It's helped me a lot. Amazing. Yeah, because when you and I first met, I remember you telling me, you're like, I am somebody who does really well with structure. And you're somebody who wants to follow a, a guide. And I think that's really, really helpful and certain circumstances but with the daily check-ins you have that accountability and structure it's always top of mind but we have to take it another level because any old monkey can find something online that says all right eat this not that do this not that but so often especially with nutrition and diet we just blindly look to somebody else to give us the answers and while that has a lot of value when it comes to learning about what's healthy for you learning how to integrate new habits in your life you can really get a lot of value from those things, right? But if there is something inside of you that doesn't feel right, it's easy to ignore those red flags because you're following a program that isn't personalized to you or changing with you as you go. So my purpose with those check-ins and something that I want you to do even after we finish the check-ins is make time to reflect. How does this food make me feel? Am I actually full and satisfied? Am I feeling confident with what I'm doing right now? Am I on a right path? Or is there something inside of me that's saying like, Ugh, like this really doesn't feel in alignment for me. This is really, really hard and it's making me want to quit. And when you look inward, you get more answers and then you get more awareness. And once you're aware of something, aware of a problem or a solution, then it becomes a choice on whether you want to solve the problem or if you want to change courses or if you want to continue with that solution over time. Throughout all of these check-ins and me asking you these questions, what things have come up for you that were really positive? What things have you found out about your own eating habits, your own journey that have had a positive impact and maybe transformed you a bit? Yeah, so I think that when we shifted to the daily check-ins that included me logging my meals and you taking a look at those, yeah. that really helped me develop next steps. Mm. So, um, and I know snacks have been a big focus, but like that, you know, just making that shift from snacking on something that is nutritious to how can I make like a well-balanced mm. snack. So it's almost like leveling up in yeah. that aspect like of your snacks. So that's really helped me a lot because it also now I'm prepping and I'm valuing mm. my snacks, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then recently I woke up hungry and I texted you. I was like, oh my gosh, like what's going on? Like I woke up hungry and I thought it was like something bad, like something wrong. I'm like, does this mean I'm not eating enough? Like, what does this mean? And you're like, no, this is perfect. That means you're waking up your metabolism. So there are just things that I didn't necessarily know. Yeah. And had you not been there, like I would have thought, oh no, like, do I need to eat more? Like I would have thought yeah. that that meant something was wrong when in fact it didn't. But since I am checking in with you every day, you know, if, you know, prior, if I were to have woken up hungry, like, or woken up hungry, I would have just eaten and, you know, like whatever, kept it moving. But I was so aware of it because it was something new for me. Mm -hmm. And because I have been reflecting, like, I think it just really puts a focus on nutrition yeah. and on reflecting on my nutrition. So, Would you say that doing a lot of self-reflecting has helped you overcome maybe some of those old excuses that used to come up in the past? Yes, yeah. so for sure. And uh, speaking of excuses, one that just happened this week, it was it must have been, what, Thursday? I think it was Thursday night, and um, Marcus had said, hey, let's meal prep. And I'm like, 
but it's Thursday. And he's like, so? I'm like, well, the weekend. Like, it's on my Saturday, Sunday. He's like, we're still eating healthy on the weekends. Like, we yeah. still need to have food prepped on the weekends. And I was like, how did I never think of this? <laughs> like, of course we do. Yeah. You know? Like, we don't change our eating on the weekends. You know, well, typically, that's typically our, uh, like, meal out that we'll do, like, either a Saturday or a Sunday. Sure. But other than that, it's, you're also, you're right. Why aren't we prepping on the, like for the weekend, Yeah. you know, instead of just Monday through Friday. So, mm. so yeah, I definitely see myself making less excuses and I've seen it like transfer to like my family as well. Mm -hmm. Cause now I'm held accountable there and like at work, you know, it's well known. So I'm being held accountable mm. there as well. So yeah, it's really just, it's coming full circle and I'm seeing it really spotlighted, I guess, in all aspects of my life so say just based off everything that you told me it's like your viewpoint about what a healthy lifestyle has shifted almost doing a complete 180 whereas before it was okay I'm following this program or maybe I eat really healthy Monday through Thursday and then I do whatever I want on the weekends because it's the weekend that's just the way that you were living your life and maybe that served you at one point in your life mm -hmm. But now that you're like, okay, this is a lifestyle. This is something I want to integrate in my day to day. You're thinking of new ways to do that in transforming how you see food and how you eat. I hear you talk about Marcus, your husband, quite a bit. And I'm just curious, because it sounds like he's getting involved. Have you been talking to him about your journey? Have you been talking to him about the check-ins? Is this a, a family affair? Yes. So I'm a talker for sure. So he hears an earful about all of it. But yeah, because especially as I like hit milestones and are, or I learn something new, I'm passionate about mm. this and this experience. So I, of course, bring it home. And then I start from top to bottom. So he hears everything. Um, he's been super glued to the episodes. It's cute. I'll come home. He's <laughs> like, I have the episode ready. Are you ready to watch? Like when they launch? Yeah. So it's really neat. And he is really invested. And when I learn something new and then I bring it home, you know, and I'm talking about it, He's almost like, you know, I'm in the chat with you, but he's like there in my face yeah. every day making sure, oh, but she said this mm. or, you know, whatever it is. So, yeah, it's really helped change like our meal prep and, you know, some of the ways that we look at food as a family because yeah. we eat together, we prep together. You know, he's my best friend. Like we do everything together. I've had a lot of people that do the daily accountability program and they bring their family members on board and they'll be like, hey, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but my husband or my daughter has this question. And I'm like, no, I want your environment. I want your inner circle to be on board with you. Thinking about the people in your family and people at work who are watching the show and supporting you, what has this experience been like for you thus far? It's been really empowering, to be honest. Yeah, it's, yeah because it's, it's shifted the mindset. You know, you can, live this healthy, healthy lifestyle, but still be social, you know, like mm. it kind of like, I don't know, it kind of, um, some of those like fears I think that people have, like, does this mean that I have to give up my social life? Does this mean that I can't go out and mm. eat? Does this mean that I can't have like a work potluck or, you know, can I not go to happy hour? All these mm. things like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I went out of town, I went out of town with some of my teammates, I was still able to go. I was still able to have a good yeah. time. We talked about it. We made a plan. I made sure I filled up on a nutritious breakfast, but then I was able to then follow up. Um, you know, I was able to enjoy myself yeah. with my team for lunch and then get back on track following. So yes. it's, you know, it's, it's that accountability and showing that this is possible. It's not restricted. It's not like you can never eat out. You know, it's right. not like your life has to drastically change. You're just almost shifting your mindset in it too. So yeah, totally. so it, it's nice because I feel like everyone knows as well, so the temptation is also a little less too. The fact that you can still go out to eat and have a social life, that's balance. You have to be able to enjoy your life and you can live a healthy lifestyle that's dialed in and focused and still make room for social events and still make room for food that you just want to eat because it tastes good. You're, you're killing it, right? We talk daily. You are sticking to your goals, you're packing healthy lunches, you're changing how you see food, you're thinking, how can I be healthier? How yeah. can I make my snacks more nutritious? How can I make sure that my weekends are golden? If you could pick one or two things in your entire relationship with food or wellness, sleep, anything that encompasses that, where do you feel like you have room to level up a notch or what needs some TLC? Okay, well, definitely not to sleep because I'm a sleeper. I can fall asleep right now. <laughs> so I got that. Am I lock. that boring? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, I could literally fall asleep like that. But um, 
so like I'm I'm all in I'm strong I'm motivated right mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. so like I'm all in and it's great mm-hmm. so that kind of starts to like wean off mm-hmm. as time goes and I guess that's somewhat my fear because mm-hmm. it's so easy to just like regress and fall back into old habits mm-hmm. you know especially when the world opens up again you know and and people are going out more and you know it is like well, let's do dinner let's do lunch it's, it's you know like the non-stop so in my head that's probably going to happen once I've been doing this for a mm, while mm-hmm. so my fear is like how do you push through those weeks that you mm. just kind of want to be like you know what I just don't feel like cooking all day on Sunday and meal prepping or you know mm-hmm. you know I just I know that I ate out last night but I want french fries again yeah. tonight so that is my fear and that's like a habit that I've like consistently had I'm good when I'm good you're good when you're good but then once I like even start to regress even the slightest bit it's like boom back into bad habits and like months later I'm like whoa what happened yeah this is different than something you've done in the past because there are no strict rules boxing you in and so as you go through this and those fears start to pop up first recognize that these are just old thought patterns based on past experiences So before when you were following diets that were set up to be either short term or unrealistic, of course they didn't last long. And so your brain just makes this connection that, oh, I can't stick to something, this is going to happen again. But this is a fresh approach for you. And so my question is, if you could fast forward six months from now, the way you're eating and living your life now, do you feel like this is a good fit? Yeah. Yes, because it's realistic. It's realistic. Yes, and it's something that I, you know, I can kind of weave in different things. So, yes, I I could definitely see that. And in those moments of demotivation, where you're like, oh, I don't want to do what I have to do, think about balance, first of all, and self-audit yourself. Say, okay, have I been motivated six days this week? Have I been just killing it? Do I just need a break so that I come back refreshed tomorrow? If so, give yourself grace. So it's like those, it's almost like, you know, when you start slipping, it's like you almost have to like stop and like put down and remember this is why. Yes. Yeah. This, this is why I started this in the first place. Yes. This is why it's important to me, you know, whether it's like a journal. like There is something about putting pen to paper. Yeah. And I tell my people that do the daily accountability program, the check-ins, that they can use me as that person. But sometimes people just want to get more personal and vulnerable and it's easier to do that when you're writing pen to paper because you have to actually think through your thoughts. Mm -hmm. It takes time to write things down. You can't just think things really quickly and move on with your life. It forces you to slow down. So writing about your intention and saying, you know what, this is why I'm doing this. This is how my life's going to change. This is how my daughter is going to be impacted. These are all the things that I'm creating and doing for myself. And that act and that practice itself can be so energizing and invigorating and just make you ready to get in it, even if it's just doing something that only takes 1%. Even if it's just like, you know what, I'm going to pack some healthy snacks. If it's, okay, I'm just going to take a walk instead of doing a hard workout. Sitting down and really getting in touch with yourself and saying like, why am I doing this in the first place and getting excited about it could be exactly the practice that you need whenever you find that you're slipping into moments of, ugh. So our session's coming to an end. Let's talk about the next steps, because we have a few fun things planned in between our final check-in. We're going out to eat together. We're gonna go do a kitchen audit. It's gonna be great. But let's talk about the things to do between now and then. And it sounds like doing some more inner reflection is going to be really beneficial for you to help reframe your mind and make sure that you stay accountable. Is this something that you want to do pen to paper or do you want to do this with me with our daily check-ins where you're doing some inner reflection and thinking about why every single day, why you're doing what you're doing? So I would prefer a combination of both because if, (laughs) if I'm no, if I know I'm not following up with you, it can be something that I could easily see that I'm just pushing to the side. Yeah. I don't have time for this today kind of thing. (laughs) So, but you know, of course you're more vulnerable with yourself sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I would like to add in both, but maybe like a every couple day check-in, like how is it going? Has anything changed? You know, so I would prefer to continue our daily check-ins as is. Okay. Cause they've been really helpful and they've really helped me a lot, but maybe just adding in that piece every couple Mm. days. That way it's not daily. Um, I like that. I don't have more to say too. Here's a thought. How about you doing the journaling daily on your, on your own and me reminding you, holding you accountable to that, asking questions. But whenever you have a moment of like self discovery, you figure something out, maybe you have like an aha moment, 
letting me know and sharing that with me. And that way we can open it up as a discussion. Mm -hmm. And then whenever you have those moments of demotivation, we can resort back to those. Yes, I love it. Cool. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. This is going to be fun. I'm yeah. excited. Me too, girl. You're Thank killing you it. Thank you so much. You're Thanks. doing great. <laughs>